All right, Clayton, here we are after the show. It's the after BO. So we are web exclusive on our YouTube channel right now. We just finished another killer episode. What do you got there? You got a you got a you got a beer? Got a beer. Nice. You got a courtyard. Oh, he's chugging it because it's the after BO and anything That's goes. That's how we do so, it. So we talked about these Wonka projections for next month. We talked about uh, uh, Taylor Swift. We got to a huge argument, though I I disagree. This is not our biggest argument ever. Um, but I it disagree. was a, it was a contentious episode. We just we just recorded, and now on the after bo, Clayton, I want to throw out an email that we just got, so we could go over this. Um, so we have wanna bo boy Phil, uh, Phil McCooch. I, feel, I so, love it. So good morning, Pat and Clayton. So he given away, he wrote this in the morning. First thing in the morning, he woke up and wrote an email to the BO boys. I love it. That's how you start a day. So he says, good morning, Pat and Clayton. Minifan, Phil McCooch here. And then he asks, when will the strike really start uh, affecting movie releases? I think if the strike doesn't end soon, we will have very long stretches of time where we have no movie releases what will happen then? Re-releases of older movies. My other question is this. We know actors cannot promote struck material, but in the case of an established rewatch podcast, similar to the 90210 or the psychologists are in, which is psych, the TV show in which they are hosted by people in good standing with the union. They have ads and full ad reads on their show. Is this not a violation of the strike? They are making money off of a struck product. Thanks for your time. Phil McCooch. Um, so thank, thank you, Phil, Phil, uh, he's a wannabe old boy. He's a minifan, fan. So he's got his priorities in order. Yeah. And yeah, Clayton, he wants to know, um, you know, the first question is when will the strike start affecting movie releases? I mean, it, they, it already has. Yeah. You know, two, well, let me answer the second out. question really fast and then we'll dig into that. Sure, sure. Second, so question, second was, question is about struck works. Now, of course, you're yeah. a SAG member in terrible standing. Mm -hmm. So you're qualified to answer this. So could you talk about these podcasts, rewatch podcasts hosted by SAG actors? So they have existing contracts that were in place before the strike started. So they have contracts that state that they need to they they need to um deliver a certain amount of episodes on this topic talking about these episodes so these were negotiated beforehand so that is something that's already that's been okayed by sag aftra because there's already contracts in place now if you were to start one of these podcasts now because you were out of work or, you know, wanted to start a rewatch podcast of struck work because you have nothing to do. You couldn't do that. Okay. Right. These are existing contracts. And once those contracts lapse, if the SAG strike is still going on, these, these, these podcasts might have to start talking about, I don't know, traffic in LA or whatever they do Interesting. Uh, at the beginning of their podcast. But that is why some can still do it. And some have stopped. It's because the ones that have stopped, they didn't have a contract where it was like, you need to give us this amount of episodes about this specific show. So something like The Office Ladies. Yeah. Jenna Fisher, the, the blonde other one. woman. Yeah. They're both acted on The Office, and every week they talk about The Office. Mm -hmm. They are contracted to like the toothbrush companies that advertise in their show. Was that worthy? Is, is that uh, they're the, podcasting the that's them? Okay. So they're, they're contracted. They're a podcasting network who I guess is not a company that the SAG actors are striking against. Yes. So that's the reason yes. because obviously actors had existing contracts to act in a movie mm -hmm. and then they're, you know, ignoring those contracts to, to be on strike with their union. Oh, it's more that they're not striking against the podcast networks 
So that's why SAG is saying, all right, don't screw with, you know, Spotify or whoever. Kate, it's 13 or whatever. Yeah. Here's yeah. an example. Uh huh. Okay. I will occasionally listen to a Boy Meets World recap podcast called Pod okay. Meets World. Okay. Okay. So it's Ryder they Strong are, on that. Ryder Strong is on it. Will Friedle and Daniel yeah. Fischel. No, Ben Savage. Wow. Okay. Ben Savage has a political career he's looking out for. Really? Yes. He's a guy who's trying to get into politics. Okay. So, uh, here's the thing with that. They've mentioned this, that they are still recapping episodes because they are under contract to do so, but they would occasionally have actors as guests on the show talking about the episodes they were on. Mm -hmm. Now that the strike is going on, they no longer have these guests on to talk about these things because they are guest guests and they don't have a contract to talk about struck work. Got it. Got it. So right? here, here's then what I would say. Here's who I think the biggest winners of this are. I'll throw this out here. The biggest winners of this whole strike podcast situation are the other actors and writers from the TV show, The Office. Because they... Look at Steve Carell. He no longer has to come up with an excuse as Mm -hmm. to why he cannot be on an episode of The Office Ladies to talk about season three, episode 14, a second time. Because he's already done that four years ago. Because they're they're basically redoing the whole series for like a third time at this point. But now because of the SAG strike, Steve Carell, when when Jenna Fisher calls up and says, Steve, we want to have you in the studio to talk about season three, episode 14 again. When when could you drive by now? Steve Carell doesn't have to say, you know, I got to take my kids to school. I got to take my grandkids to school. I got to, yeah. you know, get a haircut or, you know, I'm dying. Whatever excuse he had to fumble through before. Now he just says the union won't let me i'm not allowed so i think him bj novak uh uh mindy Mindy kaling Kaling, uh obviously john krasinski i mean he's so busy making movies jack ryan right he's playing jack ryan but you know he jenna fisher calls up and says i i'd love to have you on a 10 episode arc so we could cover uh uh we could cover what were their names on the casino was, night pam and dawn that's the original office what was uh what was uh their character names on the american office jim and pam jim and pam you know she calls up john krasinski can you come on the podcast and do 10 episodes and mm-hmm. we could talk about the season where uh, jim and pam got married mm-hmm. and and he's like god damn it i've i'm prepping on quiet place three you know, now he doesn't have to come up with an excuse. He just says, I know, you know, union strike. I just can't be on your podcast. We're on strike. We're on strike. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that's, I mean, God, I wonder if you're the, the cast and, and crew of the office, if there's a way that you could trick Jenna Fisher and the other one into thinking that the strike is still going on. Or that there there's some kind of strike related reason why they can't go on office ladies. Yeah. Well, they're hoping that the strike continues until this next rewatch cycle. Cause I think they're only contracted for three full cycles. Yeah, but the office of ladies the can go show. forever. It doesn't matter how long these contracts are. Like the office ladies are gonna be doing that podcast forever. Yeah. Like they they will not stop calling the cast members of the office to do their podcast. Like the only thing that saves Steve Carell and, and I mean, Rain Wilson, even as, as crazy as it is to think that Rain Wilson 
he probably Mr. soul pancake he's got but, time no he'll no go on. I, he'll go on no he'll go on I, to talk about his I, his, I, his I metaphysical dis- bullshit i disagree i disagree rain wilson too is benefiting from the sag strike not uh allowing him to go on office ladies i this think might, I, this might be another big disagreement I I I think everyone, but uh, especially Corral, especially Krasinski, that I agree Gelling, with. They, BJ Novak, they are sweating at the prospect of the SAG strike ending, and then them not having that excuse to avoid going on office, ladies. Yes, because they all have enough money that they don't ever have to work again. But obviously, the office ladies need this gig. Yeah. And yeah. there's nothing or, against that. I'm not saying no. Listen, we're podcasters. There's we're podcasters. podcasters. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. We're but, YouTubers. Uh, we're podcasters. Yeah. Yeah. We're on TikTok. We're on, you know, uh, Twitter X. Thanks to want to be OC and your intern, Christopher. But yes, that that's the tough thing about the SAG strike ending is Krasinski is going to have to come up with another reason why he can't drive out to the valley and, and be on office ladies. Right. So, so you know our our, you our 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 thoughts and prayers are with all of the other cast members of the office as the sag strike possibly comes to an end. Yes. Um whatever joy will come for them will be followed immediately by their cell phones yes. buzzing. Yes. And they look yeah. down and it's you know unknown it's- number and they know yeah, they know what that means. That's Jenna Fisher yeah. asking them to be on Office Ladies, or the, um, or the yeah, possibly. I think I think I think they both know to have Jenna Fisher make those calls, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Clayton, anything else you want to go over here on the after bo? No, I mean we were talking about when this is going to start affect movies, and it 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 has already. It, it has already. I mean. Yeah. Things are being pushed back already. We talked about Mission Impossible. Um, you're seeing other like projects getting pushed back. Uh, there were a few moves that I don't think we actually talked about on the show. Well, Challengers have... got moved out to next year. I mean, I think no, the that, bigger... but there's been stuff current, uh, more current than that. Challengers happened a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the the effect is in production, and. It's going to be, it's going to be, listen, the same way the uh, shutdown for COVID probably affected movie production and movie release schedule all the way into 2023. Like the first half of 2023 is kind of the first time since COVID that the movie schedule felt completely back to normal. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say from January through June of 2023, you look at that schedule and that is a old fashioned, you know, pre 2020 movie release schedule. So that means that took two years to get mm-hmm. back to that point. It took all of, you know, 2020 was screwed up, but 2021 and 2022 were still feeling the effects of that shutdown. So I mean, I think it's going to be a year or two, 2024 and 25 are both going to feel the effects of Mm -hmm. the shutdown from these strikes. It's just, that's, you know, it it takes a while to make movies. So the fact that they haven't been filming for what, six months, almost it'll end up being, you're going to see that in the release schedule all of next year and probably through 2025 to some degree at the, at the very least they can start writing. But again, you could write during COVID, but right. the things just aren't going to be produced. That's the problem right. is, is, right. is making them into a real product is going to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're already past that point where it's, where it's uh, going to have like a massive effect. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Clayton. I think we've done. We definitely are after did. BO. So, of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel and listen to the podcast on all your podcast platforms. And thank you for watching the B.O. Boys after B.O.